video, I want to discuss isomers and isomerism. And I thought it would be good to start with a brief review of what you should already know about isomers from chemistry 111, but may have forgotten. And the first thing to do would be to define what we mean by isomers. When we're talking about isomers, we're talking about molecules that have the same molecular formula but a different three-dimensional arrangement of the atoms in space. And you would have divided that into two subclasses, structural isomers, which actually differ in the connectivity of the atoms. The atoms are connected in a different order. Within those two classes, structural isomers and stereoisomers, you would have further broken it down. Within structural isomers, you would have had coordination sphere isomers. Which is specific to transition metal complexes, so we weren't actually be dealing with coordination sphere isomers in this course. But just as an example, you might have had cobalt H3-5-Cl within the coordination sphere Br, and you might have had CO and H3-5-Br-Cl, where the chloride and the bromine have switched. In the top one, you have the chloride inside the coordination sphere and the bromide outside. And in the bottom one, you have bromide inside the coordination sphere and the chlorine or the chlorine ion outside. And these would be named pentamine, fluoro, cobalt, two, bromide. Inside the coordination sphere as a ligand, with the O ending chloro at the top row on the bottom, and we're naming the one outside the coordination sphere with the IDE ending, reflecting the fact that that Br minus floats off into solution by itself. These are both cobalt two because you have two NaN ions. So that's coordination sphere isomers. And then within structural isomers, you also would have had linking isomers. And linkage isomers are isomers that are connected to the central transition metal ion by a different atom in an ambidentate ligand. Ligand is a ligand that has more than one uh, 
potential donor atom, but only one of those donor atoms is connected to the metal at a time, as opposed to a, a bidentate or a tridentate ligand where you will have two or three donor atoms simultaneously. And one of the examples of it, the cyanate versus isocyanate, cyanato versus isocyanato, is also the thio derivative, thiocyanato and isothiocyanato. But one of the ones you probably work with most in general chemistry would be NO2, which is nitro, where it's connected through the nitrogen. And ONO, which is nitrito, which is connected through the oxygen. Both of these are nitrite, right, NO2 minus, but nitrite, NO2 minus, has lone pairs on both the nitrogen and the oxygen. potentially bind to a central metal with the lone pair on nitrogen or with one of the lone pairs on the oxygen anion. And of course, there's a resonance structure for that that has the negative charge on the other oxygen. So we won't be working with coordination pair isomers or linkage isomers much in organic chemistry because we won't be working with transition metals. But we will be working with structural isomers where you have a different connection of atoms get the same molecular formula, because in many cases we would be working with molecules that have different branches on the carbons. Right? And one of the simplest examples that we've already seen is butane versus Isobutane, which has the IUPAC name of 2 methyl propane. You can also have examples, you know, the functional group classes. For example, 1 butanol versus 2 butanol. or secondary butanol, this is sometimes referred to as sec butanol. That's a common name because the alcohol is attached to a secondary carbon. Secondary carbon is attached to two additional carbons. Right? So that's structural isomers. Stereoisomers, you also would have broken down into two subclasses. And those subclasses, which I'm going to number three and four, so that we still have the same numbering system, would have been geometric isomers. Square planar D8 complex of platinum 2 
consists of trans isomers because the pi bond would have to break in order to rotate around that bond, and obviously to rotate around this bond would require breaking the ring. So all of these isomers that we've talked about, structural isomers and stereoisomers in all the different classes could be other. Optical isomers, two isomers that are mirror images of one another, and which cannot be superimposed by rotating through an 180 degree angle, which is what we usually try to do, is spin it 180 degrees to see if we can superimpose them. And you probably would have seen optical isomers in octahedral complexes in terms of the cobalt complex. It's one of the most common examples that people use general chemistry, where this is one optical isomer of So we have two possible optical isomers of this tris ethylene diamine. Bonds. 